Right, well, good afternoon everybody. Uh, just to start the, the quick video off, um, I'm down home again. Uh, as uh, a few of you will know, I've got a piece of nice bit of nature land at the back of my house and uh, I love it. And of course right in front of here is, uh, is my first crop I'll be cropping this year uh, for the juices and some of the feeds I like to make. But uh, before starting that, I'm just going to uh, lightly turn the camera around and I'm, this is for Carl Nolan. Uh, I know Carl's a, a keen watcher of, um, of all of our videos, so I'm, uh, I'd like to show Carl just a uh, few little tricks that I like to use. Carl was on about um, compost bins. Now, I use quite a few old wheelie bins that I've managed to get a hold of over the years um, in the allotment. But uh, if you can't get a hold of wheelie bins, and I'm sure they're coming, so I won't thank you for it. Uh, what I like to use is um, builders' bags. Just ordinary rubble bags. And what these are, they're just sat on an ordinary pallet, a standard size pallet. I think they're a 4x3 or 4x4. Four four. Um, and all I do with the bags is just slit them on the bottom, put a couple of good slits in them where the, uh, where the pallets join in between. And so you've got plenty of drainage holes underneath. When you first start on your bag, call if you get a load of um, branches, twigs, pod, bits of air. Uh, branch, anything like that, privet, and put a good layer that, a good six inches of that in the bottom of your bag. Um, not only will it give you good good drainage core, but what it will do, it'll let the fresh air through. Because um, once you start filling your, your compost up as you go on your different layers, uh, you, you want fresh air to come through, but um, most of all you want it to be drained. I always like to keep my, um, my beds well and truly watered. So every time I put something on it, I can get a watering can and uh, put a good swill of water over the top. Um, my mixtures, I use the same every year. Once I've got the first, once I've got the first row of um, branches on the bottom, and then what I like to do is uh, put a, a blanket of grass on the bottom and then start building up on that. Now this is my, um, this is my offering for the deer uh, from the house. I'll show you that in a minute. Another important thing to put on top of your, your bed is just no bit of carpet. And what that is, keep some moisture in. And that's what I'll off the other day. I'll say I cut the grass around the back here, and that's a nice, nice way of grass cuttings. And they're nice and moist, nice and damp. So what's going on there? So this is just two days out of the house. Bits of cardboard, tea bags, eggshells fruit skins, anything like that, uh, potato peelings, anything, um, cabbage, lettuce, anything that's coming over the house, pop that in your bucket, and uh, it's easy enough just to clean the bucket out, I'm going to find my lid, uh, it was here a minute ago, like this. It's easy enough just to clean your bucket out and pop it back up. No smells or anything. As I say, this will always last a couple of days. I just use an old bucket or an old pan and I keep that down the side of the kitchen bench in the house and uh, tip it every other day. But um, that's the offering for this for the bed today. Um, egg boxes, egg shells. What I like to do is just sprinkle that all the way around top of there, and then on top of there, to go a little bit of horse manure, any kind of manure that you've got, just straw your manure, a little bit of that on top of there, and then once again, grass cuttings, your green clippings, and just building it up in a layer, up, 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 all the way. But what I like to do with this, every time I put a layer on, as I say, I get a walking can, put it back down here. It's just an old watering can. Now let me give it a good, good soaking after every layer. And then once again, pop your cotton back on top cord. And you'll find, once you start filling your bag up, that your bag stays upright, nice and strong. Okay. And this is only after six months. 
you put a good layer of branches and twigs out on the bottom and really press it in, you'll find that it opens the bag up to the size it wants. They're just ordinary builders bags, you can get them from anywhere. Uh, people are getting sand delivered and bits and pieces rolled up their gravel. You just want half a dozen of these and put them alongside a wall or somewhere out the road in the garden and they make fantastic compost bins. Now that will be getting used next year. As I say, I've got three bags here. I've got two compost bins there. And when all this is full next year, this will fill up my back garden. It'll do all my here, um, all my borders. It'll do most of my pots in the greenhouse. And a bit of, um, bit, bit of space to go up the land, up the, up the allotment. But that's uh, that's my trip for that. If you want to follow that, um, what I'm going to start on today is I say I'm going to start collecting some nettles. <laughs> There's one of my other little beauties, that's a comfrey plant. So if you manage to get yourself a hand on some comfrey, by all means, this is just a box of weeds out the garden, that'll just sit there, get a bit of rainfall on it, and that'll go in next. Okay, so I'm just going to spin your back round again onto here, and we'll get started on the um, on these fantastic feeds. I've got um, what I've got here is loads and loads of nettles, um, and I like to crop these at least three times a year if I can. Uh, and all I like to do is just get a bag, make sure you've got a good pair of gloves for a start. And uh, all I like to do is, uh, is to cut the nettle in half, don't take it right down completely, because what will happen in the summer, it'll start. Roll away again from where you put it, and you'll get a second crop. So around here, this is absolutely covered in nettles. I can start from this end, and I can just work my way around, and I can do a cut every week. And as I say, if I've, if I've taken about 10 inches down, and where you put it there, I feel that just sticking through my glove already. Um, where, you, where you cut it there, that's going to root away, that's going to come away again, it's going to send say two top and you're going to get a, a second crop right okay no problem <laughs> and just being reminded that the wife's away out the shields and she left the door for us good on her right so as I was saying we're going to take a second crop from here in about um, three months time it's such an easy job to do as I say, I like to have a full, full, a uh, half bag to a full of that, to a full bag, and I take it up the garden. And what I'll do with that, that'll be popped into the, popped into my, one of my water bins in the bottom of the, the polytunnel, and uh, it'll make a fantastic juice. Full of nitrates, and what I like to do with this is uh, my first feed on the tomatoes. I know people like to say, um, once you start feeding your tomatoes, go on to um, onto a high potash. But um, what I like to do, when I plant my tomatoes up and I know they've getting a hold in the ground and they're wanting a bit of feeding, that, the first thing I like to do is give them a good drink of um, nettle juice. It stinks when you've got it in a barrel. But uh, if you go to some of the other videos where I've made it, um, but I'll take you through over the next couple of weeks. Usually it takes about a month for it to start fermenting. And once it starts fermenting, you get a good crust on the top of the water, but you'll smell it a mile away, so you'll know when it's ready. Just keep giving it a good stir, and you get a nice green, lovely liquid coming from it, and you can feed your cabbages, your leeks, your onions, anything. And of course it's free, and it's a fantastic uh, fantastic food for giving you uh, for giving your young plants. As I say, I always like to give me tomatoes a first feed of this. I never got none done last year, because with it having the absence, um, I never got out here much. So uh, what I'm intending to do um, tomorrow when I go up is just uh, maybe using a little bit of Epsom salts, put that in the water and give me tomatoes a good feed of that. If the bottoms of the leaves just start to yellow, because mine have been planted out for about four or five weeks now, and they might be starting to get a little bit hungry, starting looking for food. There is plenty of food in the boxes um, that I've got them in, but they're always looking for some extra tomatoes. They're a very hungry plant, and if you don't starve them, you'll get the best crop ever. So what I'm going to do tomorrow, I'll go up and I'll, when I, the next part of the video, I'll start on the tomatoes, um, but I'll give them a, I'll give them a drink of um, 
Epsom salts and that'll do exactly the same thing as what the nettles do. A good bit of nitrate in the water and it'll give them a good feed, give them a good start and then in a fortnight's time I've been watching the flowers, a lot of the flowers are setting, uh, there's plenty of bugs in the um, in the polytunnel. There's a lot of the flowers setting and start, the fruits will be starting soon. So if I give them a good heavy drink of nitrate, in a week's time when I know the fruits have set, I'll switch the feed over and we'll go on to um, comfrey, seaweed, anything, uh, anything with a high potash feed. Um, as I say, I've got comfrey here, I've got a few comfrey plants up the allotment that I like to take the leaves off, sit them in a tank of water and you get exactly the same thing. Seaweed's fantastic. Um, I like to use a seaweed fertiliser and of course we're living near the coast I can get um, plenty of amounts of seaweed. Put seaweed in a barrel and do exactly the same thing. Let it rot down, strain it off and I can give them a good drink of seaweed. And uh, that's without resorting to any chemicals or uh, artificial fertilisers and that, that's the way we like to grow it. If we can get away with Using no chemicals at all in the garden, we will do. We'll, uh, me and Roger, as I say, we like to be as eco-friendly as we can. Um, if you've got a patch of nettles in the garden, just let them grow. And as I say, you can get two or three crops from these in a year. And I'm sure the butterflies absolutely love the nettles. So if you want the butterflies to come down on here and, and settle on your nettles instead of your cabbages, that's the way to do it. As I say, I've got plenty here, and I can go each week for a full year, just work my way around, Take the full bag full and a bag full every week I'll go to the tanks and just kept stirring up and stirring up and by the summer time we'll have give it six weeks to a month, a uh, month to six weeks and we'll have a fantastic crop and start feeding with leeks, with onions, with cabbages, uh, anything that likes a high nitrogen. But uh, as I say, for the first crop, what I'll do is I'll get a I'll give the tomatoes. Not be this year, it'll be next year again. I'll just give them a drop of uh, Epsom sauce tomorrow and that will hopefully perk them up. But yeah, but, uh, as I say, it's just an easy job to do. Just make sure you've got a bit of supper. Good strong pair of gloves, good sharp pair of scissors, and just work your way through the crop. Well, I've just done this first little patch here, and already I've got a quarter of a bag full. So I'll take that up the garden tonight, and I'll set that in the water, give it a good stir up. Put a covering over the tank, just a plastic bucket, keep the heat in, and then within a couple of weeks you'll start smelling it. Absolutely fantastic. You can use uh, manure, a uh, good horse manure or cow manure, get an old, old onion bag from the fruit shop, fill it with that, tie it, and suspend it in your barrel of water, and that does exactly the same thing. It'll give you a lovely juice, nice brown juice for feed your tomato plants. Um, as I say, without resort, they have to use say, synth synthetic feeds or anything like that. But uh, this is just one step forward. What I will be doing tomorrow, um, I mentioned the uh, Dean Roberts on the uh, on my Facebook page the other day that I'll be spanking my tomatoes sometime next week. Now um, I always get some strange comments uh, when I when I start this trick. Oh, it's not a uh, it's not one of these rituals where I'll be uh, dancing semi naked under a full moon and um, <laughs> doing strange things like that. It's just another way of um, fertilising your tomato plants. I'll be taking a cane and I'll be giving them a good whacking. The way I've set my frames up with all the canes, sometimes I can just stand and shake them. And what it is, it just releases the pollen from second, third truss up down to your bottom truss. Uh, if you've got plenty of bugs, plenty of flies like I have up the polytunnels, you're getting pollination, but just to be on the safe side, I'll give them a good spanking, but I'll show you that in the next part of the video. But for the time being, I'm going to carry on here, getting a good half bag full of nettles cut, and then when I go to the plot tonight, we'll, uh, we'll finish off the movie. Maybe it's tonight into, into tomorrow. It's getting a little bit um, getting a little bit dark here. We're getting some clouds moving over from the west. Absolutely fantastic this morning here in the northeast. The sunshine was out. It was beautiful. And so I thought I'd come out the day and get, um, get cracking on this. It's just another thing, as I say, we're getting the feed ready. The plants are rumping away up the, up the allotment. Um, we're going to be busy planting out all this weekend. I was hoping to get onto the, the basket challenge and uh, the three sisters challenge. Now, the sweet corn are absolutely belting away. So I might have to have another look at them and I might have to pot them up again. As I say, it's, um, we've got another fortnight, uh, another week before I take them potatoes up, the first early potatoes. So if I, if I don't think they're ready, I'm going to have to wait on another week 
and then um, so that puts the sweet corn back into the wheat. As I'm always saying, timing's everything. Get your timing right, and you should be fine for your plants. So, um, as I say, the Three Sisters Challenge might have to be put on hold for another week, and uh, the basket challenge will definitely be at the front for another hold. I've only just started unloading some of the, um, the flowers from out the bottom tunnel onto the back benches to really chill them off and to really harden them up because we're going we're gonna to be in for another cold spell again this weekend with some all rain and heavy winds so I'd rather just keep them safe and rather than lose them all so we'll, uh, we'll have a think about that as, a, as the weekend grows on and we'll see what the weather's like I might have a bit of time on Sunday to start it off I know it's a, it's a big job because see, I've got to make a big mix up for my basket I've got to get a pipe in the centre for the drainage and I've got to get all my plants sorted out so it's, uh, it's a time consuming job but if I have got the time, I'll start it and I'll make a video, the same as what Dean's doing, Dean Roberts. He's doing it on the Saturday, I think it's the 25th. Dean Hood's doing his on the Sunday, because he's working. Um, so it's a possibility I might have time to get mine done on the Monday, which is the bank holiday Monday. If I have, I'll make a video and uh, I'll stick it online and I'll share you with you how I'm doing my basket. But for the time being, I'm going to knock off now, get the rest of my nettle juice taken off, my rest of my nettles cut, for what I want for, for today anyway. I'll take up the garden tonight and we'll do a, we'll carry on with the video of the night and uh, if, I've got a, if I've got a chance I may start spanking them tomatoes tonight. So I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll show you how I'll go on with that. Okay, bye for now. Right, well good afternoon everybody. I've managed to get up at last. Uh, <coughs> Temperatures up here from down home, it's absolutely incredible. It's 90 in this open polytunnel. Doors are wide open, top of open, netted doors, winds blowing right through, but it's still 90 degrees in here. God knows where it is in the big tunnel outside, I haven't checked in there yet where the melon house is. Um, that's why I've always got plenty of windows open, doors always on the hook, even if an evening now, if there's no, there's going to be no fr frost focus, I'll either the tunnel's on the hook just to let the fresh air through. Even if the temperature drops down to 50, 45, 50 through the evening, that's fine for me. Tomatoes are nice and cool, and they're growing away nice and strong. Um, as I say, I've been doing one of my main chores this afternoon, picking the nettles. And uh, what, these have been down home for about half an hour, and they're sweating down just nicely now. That bag was full. Uh, I haven't got any gloves on, so I'm going to have to be careful what I'm doing. And uh, I've got a barrel of water here. Now I can fill this bag up, three quarter fill it every week, without fail, just from that piece of land at the back of me. Nice fresh nettles every week. All you have to do, you don't have to bother chopping them up or anything, I never do. Just cut them the way they are, steep them in the water. Now the idea of bringing them in the polytunnel is that it's nice and warm in here. And that water is lovely and warm being inside a polytunnel. And believe you me, after a couple of weeks it'll start fermenting straight away. So all I need is just a couple of little stairs. Every week, nothing else. Fill the tank right up and I always put a cover over the top of the tank and that's what it's been been laid for here. And that just sits over the top there. And that keeps all that heat in. There's a few holes in the top there for the for the air to come through. Because when it starts fermenting, the smell will come through there and you can, uh, you can smell it a mile away. Absolutely fantastic. High in nitrogen, so it feeds a multitude of plants. As I say, why I do it in the tunnel is because uh, the temperatures are nice and hot in here. It's going to keep the water to a nice steady temperature. And I say the fermentation is going to be a lot quicker. So within a few weeks, you'll have a nice um, barrel load of brew ready to feed your hungry plants. Nothing in this tunnel will be get fed with it, because for a simple reason, the potatoes in here at the moment, you'll be getting taken out in about a week's time, fortnight's time if they're ready, and the sweet corn will be going in for the Three Sisters Challenge. Now I'll not be using any of that for the, the sweet corn, because I've got peas to go alongside the sweet corn, which again, peas are a nitrogen fixer, they make their own nitrogen in the soil, so what they're going to do, they're going to feed the sweet corn, so I'll not need any extra feeds on that. And the melons and squashes that's going to go along the side, well they are mainly potash lovers. So I'll have another barrel on the other side filled with comfrey, 
or this is off last year's and all we did was put a bag full of seaweed, put it in a small barrel, fill it up with water and left it over the winter and uh, we've been draining it off the last few weeks and that's a nice brown seaweed liquid and that's what we feed what well, melons or squashes, uh, tomatoes, anything like that. Any fruit bearing plants are get fed on seaweed. It's natural. As I say, we've got comfrey, we can put comfrey in the water. Um, any amount of different feeds rather than go to synthetic feeds. Um, some of the stuff's fine, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, run of the run of the mill tomato feeds, you can get them get the liquid feeds, you know, if, if you don't want to go to the, the extremes of making your own juices and that, that's fine. But uh, for us, it's a great way of uh, feeding our plants. And uh, there's one and there's one example, prime example. Now these are the pot leaks I was telling you about that were sown in January, end of January, if you go back to my videos, and they're absolutely spot on, first class. And nearly pencil thick, as I say, they'd be up to 18 inches high. The bigger the pot you can give them, the better. And all you have to do is give them a good compost. This is my own compost that we'll make up. Uh, reason being is because these leaks have been in since January. Uh, three, four months now in the pot, and they're growing away absolutely great. Now, what we'll be doing with these if I had some seaweed, if I had some um, nettle juice ready, I'd be giving these a really good soaking in nettle juice because, as I say, it's full of nitrates, leeks, onions, cabbages, anything like that. The Brassica family love it, and it's a really good first class juice to feed these and get them going, especially when they're young. As I say, I'll give them a good soaking in nettle juice. And then they'll be planted out next week, which is the end of May. Spot on. As I say, go back on my video in January and uh, watch us where I sowed these. There would have been a lot of people then thinking, God almighty, the size of them pots for a few, seed, for a few seeds. Um, as I did, I split a packet of seed, I think there's about 200 in the packet. And I split it into four, roughly 50 plants per pot, a nice big pot. And uh, that's your result. Absolutely first class leaks. Now, I will be doing a video next week I'll, uh, when, I'm pot when I'm planting them out because no doubt that uh, I'll just tip this out no doubt that pot's going to be absolutely chocker the, uh, the roots are starting to appear there and look at that, first class absolutely beautiful, lovely roots now we don't need these roots but I'll show you all that next week we'll cut most of them off and we'll have a nice a nice pot leak just to dibble a hole and drop them in uh, that's for a leak bed, so we'll, we'll do them next week. But uh, as I say, that's the nettle juice. What you can do is just take the lid off, give it a stir around once a week, and uh, add more nettle to it if you need be. As I say, I'll be taking a bag every week from down home, bringing it up here. I'll go into one barrel, go to another barrel, and they'll just get stirred and stirred and stirred. And in a couple of weeks time, they'll be fantastic. We can water cabbages with them, as I say, all the Prasica family, your onions, your leeks, anything like that. First class. And what? Going on the Facebook page once again, there's loads of bugs starting to appear. Um, I'm a great believer in making your own stews and juices. Uh, I've got an old garlic bulb that Roger, we dug the um, part of the greenhouse and we're planting tomatoes and we found an old garlic bulb off last year. Now that'll get crushed up and I'll make a garlic spray next week and to go around the last of these strawberries. The strawberries are fantastic, there's massive ones on these buggers here. Absolutely beautiful. But we'll give them a garlic spray just to keep any green fly down. I haven't used any marigolds yet. The marigolds are nearly ready. They'll be getting planted in the in the in amongst the tomatoes next week. And that's to keep the white fly away. Grey fly, it's great for them. Plenty of marigolds in between. So once again it's all natural. And there's my old favourite, the rhubarb. Rhubarb juice. I make loads of this, but just be very careful with it because it is a poison. Uh, when I make my juices up I always go on the, the lighter side. Don't make too heavy a mix and don't put too much in your water. If I make a litre up, a litre bottle, I'll probably put um, a quarter of a quarter of the spray with this with the juice and then top the rest up with warm water and a couple of good drops of uh, washing up liquid. Once again if you go back um, on how I make the juices on one of my videos, it's uh, it's the bugs and you'll find out how I made the rhubarb juice and how I made the, the how I made the garlic spray and how I made the rhubarb juice. They're both on the, as I say, if you go back and look on my videos, you'll find uh, you'll find both of them. But I'll be taking this down the night. Nice bunch of rhubarb leaves. We've already ate the rhubarb. The wife made a lovely crumble with it. 
put in. I never throw anything away. You don't have to do anything with that. Just as I say, it's just fold it up. I'll just sit that in a pan of two pints of water, bring it to the boil, let it steep, let it there uh, simmer away for about twenty minutes, and you'll see the juice turn nice and green. Strain it off through a bit of muslin, and you've got a first class um first class spray to, to get rid of most of the bugs, especially if you're using it on flowers. Um, lily beetles and that, uh, on Dean's Dust, the plot I posted the other night, loads of lily beetles. This will fettle them little buggers, no problem. Give them a good dose of that, and of course you're not eating the flowers, so I tend to use this on a lot of my flowers, dahlias, croissants, stuff like that, stuff I'm not eating. Cabbages and brassicas early on, before they start forming into a, a decent plant where you're going to be very fighting. If you've got um, caterpillars and that, if you've got Butterflies coming down and laying eggs and you've got caterpillars, give them a blast of this or a garlic spray, it's a, make a nice garlic spray up and that taints the cabbages and it, the, the hair tasting that and it just stops them from eating it. Um, so that's a couple of them, um, couple of little ways you can get by that. As I say, nettle juice, great for feeding. Um, seaweed, you can buy seaweed fertilizers in the shops in a pellet form, but to me, if you live by the coast, or you can, you've got transport and you can get near a coast, go down and get your own, and it's fantastic. As I say, we're lucky, we're only a couple of miles off the North Sea here. And in a couple of weeks' time, what I will be doing, I'll be going down there, down to King Eddie's Bay. I'll take you down, take the camera down, and I'll show you how I, I get my first bag of seaweed in late spring. Um, when you've had a bit of a storm come up, the seaweed gets washed up on the sands, and you're quite welcome to go down, help yourself. I'll take my trolley down, fill the trolley up, and bring it back up on the bus, and that's my first seaweed of the year. Normally I'll get one of my friends to go down the car and we'll get a couple of binfuls, but it's fantastic for titties, for tomatoes, for anything, you know, it, uh, it really is a fantastic feed. So if you can get your hands on seaweed, all the better. But uh, that's just a couple of feeds and a couple of sprays that we use over the year. And it, uh, as I say, we you keep the garden nice and free, free of pests, and of course free of chemicals if you can. But uh, that's one of our main, that's one of our main objects, is not to use any chemicals if we can get away with it. Um, unfortunately I had to use a bit of um, weed killer outside the pathway, where it's been poorly the last couple of years, I couldn't use a spade. I like to chop down the weeds with a spade and just uh, let them die down with the heat. But I couldn't do that, so I had to use a little bit of spray. That's my excuse, and uh, as I say, hopefully in the next couple of months I can get back to normal and we'll start weeding by hand again, like we normally do. I know it's tedious, but... Uh, we love it. Right, okay, so getting the sprays out of the way. My nettle juice is on the go. My first brew. This barrel here, if you know, if you go back on my other videos, I put the hops in this barrel. Uh, the hops have been great. I've been, we've been feeding tomatoes and everything with this, the young tomatoes with it. And it's just a nice, um, it's just a nice mixture. So what we're going to do with that, we're going to hire a bag of nettles in there tomorrow or the next day, mix it all together, and then we'll get two barrels on the go for our nettle juice. Absolutely fantastic. If we've got smelly vision, you'll get an idea of what it's like. But um, you just watch me face when I'm stirring it up when it starts starts fermenting. It's absolutely amazing stuff. You see, you get a, you get a great um, you get a great juice from it. And uh, say that when you try it yourself, you'll find out. But uh, I'll leave that until uh, until another video. I'm gonna pop next door now, and I'm gonna crack on my tomatoes on again. I'm a bit of a spanking, so we'll get next door. Okay. Right, well, good afternoon everybody. Hopefully I'll get the, I'll get this um, video finished today. Um, fortunately last night as I was uh, making the video, the, the sun just kept popping out and popping out and uh, before I knew where I was, it was absolutely big in here, so there's no way I could uh, carry on filming. So, as I say, tonight what I want to do is to, uh, to get stuck in these, the first of the tomatoes. Uh, that's a big ball, it's a big Spanish, and give them a good spanking. Uh, I know Dean Roberts has been looking forward to it, <laughs> so we're going to crack on. Um, the main ones here, the big, the big first ones. If your if your tomatoes are growing the size of this, then you you're doing well. You're doing exactly as I do, and uh, you're you're ready for a super crop coming from these big boys. They're up to three trusses now, and they haven't had any centre stake in these. What I've done, I've put side stakes, side cane, and strings in between 
And what I like to do with the large Spanish is just let them grow up themselves. Let them grow up. They'll get two or three heads coming from them. Leave them. Don't nip them off. They're like a semi bush. The bigger you get a plant, the better. As I said before, usually I've got a bit of nettle juice uh, to feed them earlier on. But uh, with not having the nettle juice, we're just starting it off. I'm not going to use that. And what, all I'm going to do is uh, give them a good drink of Epsom salt. Because what I'm noticing on the bottom leaves is that um, the bottom of the leaves is that they're just starting to yellow slightly. Now they've been in these big pots now in the buckets for uh, for four weeks. So, you know, the nutrients are starting to slightly run down. And you can see by the size of that plant, they're massive. And uh, before I start feeding with potash, I'm going to give them a good drink of Epsom salts. As I say, normally I'll use a nettle juice, give them a really good drink of that. And the idea I've been with the rates and nitrogen is to feed the plant itself. Get that plant a nice, as big as you can, nice big leaves, and it'll support as much fruit as you want. And that's always been my aim, to get a nice big plant first, and then once the fruit starts, and then start feeding the fruit. Uh, but before that, as I say, I want to give them a good spanking. Uh, little guy in the States, uh, I was reading a book one day, a magazine, Gardener magazine. Uh, some delightful little stories in it, and of course I've come across this one. And a uh, little American guy had put in uh, that he loved the spunkies tomorrow, so I just read on and read on. And uh, this idea of it is to go around with a, just a small cane and get a, give their canes a real good wagon. And the idea of that is the trusses are coming up. This is now on three trusses. It's shaking the pollen from the top truss down to the second truss down to the bottom truss. So all in all, it's in good pollination again. I know the place is full of flies, full of hover flies, and uh, they're doing a lot of the work for us because the doors are always wide open. I'll be putting marigolds in the big bed soon, and that'll keep down the white fly, the green fly. Um, and then once again, if need be, we can spray, we can spray with, a, uh, with a garlic spray on the tomatoes, which you won't harm. Well, as the Italians say, garlic and tomatoes always go together, so that will not harm. But um, I've noticed on the bottom, the first trusses, the flowers are just starting to die back. Um, and there's a small fruit just appearing. So as I say, I'll give it a good night rate tonight. Give it a good drink of that. And I'll put a big boost into the plants. Help them grow. Nice big strong frame. And uh, in a fortnight's time, I'll switch to, to a, a comfrey tea. Or a seaweed tea. Um, there's lots of different things you can use. Um, as I say, they need plenty of potash. Uh, seaweed. Anything like that does. And uh, we'll switch over to that. And that'll start feeding the fruits. I don't like feeding the fruits too early. Like I say, I want to concentrate on getting a nice big strong plant first, and that'll hold as much as the fruit as you want. You know, you get a nice big framework built up, and then the fruits will come next, and you'll get a fantastic crop. So if your plants are as big as this, and then, then you're doing okay. I'm well chuffed with them because I'm starting to just hang the leaves over the first set of uh, canes here. Nice and slack, not too much. And what I can do later on is put another set here, a bit higher up, because with the Spanish ones, I like to get them up, up three to four foot with a, with a good four trusses of tomatoes on. And once you get a good truss of these on, and they really are big, nice, big, lo lovely tomatoes. Um, so if I get four trusses off them, I'm well pleased. So as I say, today it's all about just giving them a, a good spanking, get that pollen shifted down, and get them first tomatoes on the bottom pollinated. As I say, if you've got the insects in, spot on, it does them a world of good. I'll just uh, spin you around and show you the main crop, the main beds. That's them um, uh, sorted out. Uh, the sun is absolutely big, and again up here, and it was, as I come up from home, it was, uh, it started clouding over a bit. But as I say, when I've come up now, and the sun's come out again, so I'm, I'm hoping it's not going to, uh, I'm hoping it's not going to do the beds any, any, yeah, uh, the film and any, any harm. As I say, these are all single canes, these up here. So, once again, uh, Roger's got the, the money maker along the front. I've got Spanish and American in the middle, and over the back end I've got an assortment of Greek, Cork Fu, and uh, some other different ones at the top end. But uh, all these will be treated exactly the same, with them being on single stems, uh, with them being on a single stem here. Once the tomatoes get up, once again, once the tomatoes get up to about two to three foot, all I'll do is go along, get the canes, a good tapping, good shaking, good spanking, and that's doing exactly the same thing again. Once they're tied up the ropes, what you can do, you can get a hold of it, one line, and it'll actually shake a whole rope right up and down. 
Now I'll do the same thing. I'm just releasing the pollen from the top trusses down to the bottom and pollinate them all. Uh, the tomatoes are well in now. These, these ones I've been planting now a fortnight. They're growing away really well. I'm chuffed to pieces with these. Um, they're not as big as my Spanish ones yet, but they, they've all taken. I don't think we've lost any yet. I've got one little one over in the far greenhouse where I'm doing the trail tomatoes, and I think I'm losing one of them. But they, all in all, uh, we're doing really well this year. Just one little tip, one last tip before we, before we end this video. Yeah, and it's once again it's about the watering. Um, I've known people once they get once they get the tomatoes in this form into the tunnels and they think they're well, they think they're, they're well off, they think they're grown great. What I've seen them do, I've seen them pull hoses in, start watering from the hose. To me, that's definitely a no-no. They're still young plants, as far as I'm concerned. They're still building their roots and they're still trying to build their framework up. So the last thing they want, or the last thing they expect them, is to be covered with freezing cold water. And that will definitely give them a check. Set them back, a couple weeks on end, sometimes even kill them off altogether. Um, in the summer, it's fine. Once the plants start building their strength up, and they get a good decent size, by then, I can come in and I can water with the hose. At the moment, we've got the weepy hoses on. The water still comes through there, it's still cold out the top. But what the weepy hoses are doing, they're separated, they're a couple of inches away from the plant, so they're not actually going onto the plant, they're just, the water's seeping down into the soil, the roots are picking it up, but by then it's getting a little bit milder. Definitely no water onto the plants. I always water around, the first couple of waterings, the first week or two, your head's starting to bake in the sunshine. <laughs> I water around the plants, and if you have to get water into here, get yourself a couple of barrels, or even buckets, uh, water cans, fill your water cans up, leave them in the greenhouse, let that water come up in the temperature, and then water them. Yeah, but by all means, don't put any freezing cold water on them, because uh, that will set them back. But yeah, they're growing away fantastic. I'm over the moon with them. And once again, I've got the strawberries on the side. These are just about ready to come out now, they're just about finished. But what a fantastic crop of these. The small ones are still on. The smell of them, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, my job for tonight now, once I finish knocking off this film, I'm going to water everything down and then I've got the big boxes on the back here to fill with manure or the half fill with manure and then tomorrow morning, me and Roger's going to make a couple of big mixes up and we're going to fill these boxes up and then hopefully we'll get the melons planted out on Sunday but the weekend, it's a bank holiday Monday um, I've got a few jobs that I need prior to, to prioritise and that's getting out the um, getting out the brassicas and I've got beetles to plant and uh, all sorts of different things to put off in the greenhouse, so I'm going to be um, I'm going to be prioritising my time in between different jobs and seeing what I can get done first, see what I can get out of the road, the priority jobs, and then I'll concentrate on the melons. But I will be starting another video off at the end of the week on the melons and the cucumbers because there's a lot of people been losing them. But I've given you quite a few tips over the last couple of uh, the last couple of videos, especially on watering. Get your watering right, and you should be you should be fine. You shouldn't have any problems whatsoever. Um, as I say, I've been trying to get these. The last of these Japanese onions pulled up, and uh, these are the ones that were put in last year. We'll put the um, put the spring cabbage in here, and there was a bit of a gap, so we had a few um, Japanese onions left in the packets, and of course these were the white snowball, and that's in there. And the smell is absolutely fantastic. Beautiful. So what I'm going to do tomorrow, I'm going to pull all this rope, get them hung up, get them dried up. Absolutely fantastic. I like to use a little bit of the green and all, as well as the white. Absolutely beautiful onions, them. Well chuffed for them. So what, what I'll do is I'll get all them pulled up tomorrow, and I'm going to put a row of, um, of melons along the front here, and I'll just let them trail in amongst the tomatoes, because I've got plenty of melons this year, I've got plenty of squashes, so I can, uh, I can always find something to throw away along here. But uh, I'm over the moon. Yeah, everything's going away great. Uh, I hope we're helping. And we've got a lot of su su new subscribers coming online. So I'm, uh, I'm over the moon with that. So we must be doing something good. Um, as I say, judging by some of the comments. But um, if you can't wait for the videos and you want to come on to our site and just uh, get one on the Facebook site, which is uh, Jeff Foreman on the plot. Uh, send with friends who request and we'll, uh, we'll get you on the plot. And uh, we're on the air every night.
um, commenting, sharing pictures. Uh, anything you need to know or you, you want to know, if we cannot help you, there's always somebody on our site that will. Lots of good growers, um, lots of um, experienced growers, uh, showmen. So, you know, if there's, if there's anything you need to know and you, you're not too sure about, either comment down below on the videos or get one on our Facebook page. Just send a request and we'll get you onto Facebook, on, onto our account there. Let's say Jeff Holman on the plot. And uh, just ask away. If, as I say, if we don't know, there's somebody on the site that does know. And we'll, uh, we'll try our, all our best to give us give us a helping hand right through the year. But, um, yeah, as long as your tomatoes are grown well and your cucumbers are grown well, it's a, uh, it's a good start. I'll start again next week with the flowers because I've got the croissants to pot up. They're going to their final pots. Yeah, the last of the cuttings are coming out. The dahlias, I've got to sort the dahlias out. And uh, I've still got me, me gladiola like the plant. They should have been done a fortnight ago. But uh, as I say, as long as I've got the stock, I can get it, find a room to plant in the, in, outside in the garden somewhere. And I've still got the stock for next year for when I do eventually start showing again. I'll get me, get me strength back, get back to full fitness, and uh, I'll be over the moon. But yeah, that's it for now. Um, as I say, I hope, you, I hope I help you with a few tips. Um, I hope I'll help you with a few juices. Um, I've got a bit of garlic to take down home. I've got a garlic bulb up there. I'm going to take that down home with this. Um, I've got my rhubarb leaves down there, so I'm going to make, make a couple of brews up over the next year or two. Oh, it's beautiful now. It's just a nice big cloud just passed over. And uh, the difference is absolutely amazing. You'll probably be able to see it on the, on the camera. The glare's gone now. But yeah, I'm going to get myself way down and make up a couple of brews. I'll wait till the wife goes out before I do the garlic one. Or I'll get myself a little bottle of gas up here and I'll start doing them on the plot. But uh, it's a lot easier, a lot less hassle, because I end up stinking the flood over the garlic. But um, I'll get them sprays made, and as I say, if I get the, get the, um, the marigolds planted in here next week, ready for the green fly, the onset of green fly, and we should be okay. Um, as I say, it's, it's just careful monitoring, keep an eye on your plants. If you don't get a build up of insects, and then there's different sprays you can use without resorting to chemicals. And if they don't work, well, <laughs> you've got problems. Uh, but uh, for the time being, I'm going to knock off. I've got a lot of watering to do. If I want to get, that, get the watering done, and I get that finished off. And then get myself down home, and hopefully get this video online. So, as I say, uh, glad you're enjoying it. Keep on sharing. Keep on subscribing. And we'll see you all again in the next video. Okay, bye for now.